Attention teachers, please vaccinate. Smell beautiful young infants with MMR routinely. A trip could kill you. All right, in this scene, we're going to talk about vaccination. So vaccination is something that induces an active immune response to specific pathogens. So let's talk about the different kinds. Let's begin with live attenuated vaccine. So he had this guy over here singing, Attention teachers, please vaccinate. Small beautiful young infants with MMR routinely. Attention for adenovirus. Teachers for typhoid, TY21A or oral. Please for polio, the Sabin version, which is the live attenuated version, which is not given in the US. Vaccinate for varicella, small for smallpox, beautiful for BCG, which is again not given live in the US. Young for yellow fever, infants for influenza, the intranasal, MMR for MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, and routinely for rotavirus. So basically a live attenuated vaccine is when the microorganism, it loses its pathogenicity, it's not gonna be dangerous anymore, but it retains its capacity for transient growth within the inoculated host and it induces a cellular and a hemoral response. Just in terms of the pros and cons, pros include the fact that it induces a very strong response and it often provides lifelong immunity. But the cons include the fact that it may revert to a virulent form. That's what we saw in polio virus many years ago. And it's often contraindicated in pregnancy and in, dim in immunodeficient patients. Okay, now let's go to killed or inactivated vaccine. So here he is, this guy on the floor, he's dead. He's a dead vaccine, a killed vaccine. A killed vaccine is when a pathogen is inactivated by heat or chemicals, but the epitope structure is maintained on the surface antigens, and that's important for the immune response. And this mainly induces a humoral response. So this is represented by this guy who said, A trip could kill you. A uh, for hepatitis A. Trip for typhoid, the VI polysaccharide and intramuscular. R for rabies, I for influenza, P for polio, and kill for the salk form which is the one that's given in the US. Now, of course, the killed inactivated vaccine is safer than the live vaccines, but it's gonna induce a weaker response and booster shots are usually required. They're also more expensive because you not only have to make the pathogen, you also have to kill it. All right, my favorite part, this guy over here, this gnome who's sticking part of his body outside this building, he's a subunit. This reminds us of the subunit vaccines. This includes only the antigens that best stimulate the immune system. It's represented by this gnome over here, gnome for pneumonia, who's sticking his head partly out with this flute, flute for influenza. And he has this heap of bees at the end of it, the heap of bees for hepatitis B. And he's popping this balloon somehow for papillomavirus, human papillomavirus types 6, 11, 16, and 18. And I forgot to mention, he's a very nice gnome. He's a very nice gnome, a nice gnome for Neisseria, an ingenitus. And if you look really closely, he actually has some husks. And that reminds us of pertussis. And finally, the toxoid vaccination, which you don't have in the seed over here because it's actually quite easy. The toxoid vaccine has antigenic features of the toxin, but it's not the toxin itself. It stimulates the immune system to make antibodies without potential for causing disease. Pros include protection against bacterial toxins, but cons include the fact that it may, they may require boosters. And this is used for tetany and diphtheria.